Are we live? Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Azuzin uh, session. To yet another Azuzin session. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and uh, officially start the stream. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, okay. So, a red uh, circle live on Twitch. Uh, and what are we doing today on Twitch at dot at television website? Today, we are visualizing neural uh, networks with C. How about that? Isn't that poggers? So I'm going to give the link to um, so slow twitch.tv slash sodding uh, in the place where we're doing all of that and uh, I'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged and there we go the stream has officially started and a welcome welcome hello hello so today we continue developing nn.h which is a simple header only head only why did they put head only in here <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a simple header only library uh, right uh, in C right and uh, we implemented a lot of cool stuff in here we uh, implemented like the actual representation of the neural networks as matrices right you can feed forward information through the neural network by multiplying uh, matrices sequentially we also implemented back propagation right so now training the neural networks is blazing fast whatever the fuck the rust people say uh, right and uh, so today I would like to actually maybe do something interesting Right, so um, essentially, uh, the way you can look into the current state of the neural network, right, so um, is by printing its weights and biases, right. So uh, let's actually go ahead and do that, right. Essentially, here I have a Zorn neural network, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> right, and uh, here I allocate the neural network, and one of the things I do in here, I also randomize the neural network so let's go ahead and uh, just literally print all of, the, all of the weights and biases of this neural network and actually exit so it doesn't go into the training process so here we do training as you can see uh, back propagation and so on and so forth we're gonna skip that we're gonna return right away i'm gonna build this entire shit uh, right, I'm gonna build this entire shit and we're gonna try to run uh, this thing, right? So this is gonna be Zor and this is how this is how neural network looks like, right? So uh, essentially the neural network usually we uh, visualize neural networks the following way, right? So specifically Zor neural network it has two inputs, right? So this is a pretty meh color in my opinion green green is not a creative color so let's actually use something like maybe yellowish uh right so this is the uh two input neurons right so then we have two hidden neurons and then one output neuron and it's fully connected neural network so that means each layer so this is layers right each layer is fully connected with the next layer right so that means this one is connected with these two and this one is connected with these two fully connected and these uh, two are also connected so this is how we usually draw all of that so each neuron has uh, its own bias right so it has its own bias uh, essentially this is not particularly like a layer per se it's an input layer so they don't really have biases but we do have biases in here so there's a bias in here there's bias in here there's bias in here and each connection also has its own weight right so as you can see something like this right so all of them have their own weights and essentially the weights between the input and the first layer they are realized as the matrix right they're realized as a matrix and this is essentially what we see in here right so this is the uh, matrix of the weights for the for the input layer right from from the input layer into the hidden layer and this is the matrix of the biases of these uh, of these neurons right so the next matrix is the weights of uh, these two things, right, and uh, the last bias, so it's a matrix, matrix one by one, is uh, basically this thing. So it's okay when the neural network is small, right, so it's totally fine when it's small, but if it becomes bigger, this entire stuff becomes kind of like not readable, in my opinion, not particularly readable. So let's take a look at the adder neural network. So the adder neural network is actually more flexible. So here at compilation time, we can specify the amount of bits this adder can add up. Uh, right, and essentially um, it accepts twice as many bits 
So the first half of the input, it's the first number that you need to add. And the second half of the input is the second number that you want to add. Uh, right. And the output is basically bits plus one. So the, the result of the addition and the overflow flag. Right. So if the sum overflows, it will be set to, to one. Uh, right. And essentially, this is a little bit bigger. Right. So it has a lot of like other stuff. And uh, here we're already printing it. So let's take a look at how it's going to look like if we try to, to look at this entire stuff. <clears throat> uh, to look into this entire stuff. So if we run uh, the editor, right? So yeah, it's not particularly great to look at this kind of stuff. And we have only four bits to work with and uh, two layers. What if we had like, I don't know. So essentially, if we take a look at the neural network that three blue and brown used uh, for classifying the the numbers, the digits specifically, it went something like this, right? So each image of the of the digit was 28 by 28, I think, right? So 28 by 28. Then uh, there was a one hidden la layer with 16, the second hidden layer with 16, and the output layer was uh, 10, right? So this was the architecture of the neural network. Uh, right, but I'm not sure if that's the official term the AI ML people use, right? So I'm, I'm not an AI person, so maybe I'm using very untraditional, uh, you know, terms, but I'm not sure if I care. So uh, let's actually try to recompile this entire thing and let's take a look at how, uh, like how big of the, of the network this is going to be. And I'm sure I'll have to actually switch to uh to the terminal right so because the emax is not a particularly fast terminal so it's going to be painful to look at and uh this is how this neural network looks like so <laughs> i suppose this is the input layer right because you have like uh oh well, it doesn't even fit into the terminal <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it's it's not even it doesn't even fully fit into the terminal. We can actually output that thing into some sort of like a txt file and open it in here. Uh, okay, so uh, so the output is almost almost thousand lines of uh, lines of text, right? So yeah, so this is the first matrix. Uh, that's a pretty huge matrix. So <laughs> right. Needless to say, it's kind of difficult to visualize this kind of stuff, right? So it would be nice to have something better to get an overview of how the neural network looks like. Uh, one of the ideas of the, of, uh, that I have is basically, let's actually, instead of using like text, uh, right? Instead of using text, uh, let's try to use uh, the actual images, right? Uh, and literally draw the neural network like this, right? So if we have something like this, like just generate a picture uh, that visualizes this entire stuff. And on top of that, uh, what I would like to do is that color uh, the weights and the neurons differently depending on the um, depending on their values, right? So that would be actually kind of interesting. So essentially, the more the bigger the value of like, for example, of the bias, the more green the neuron will appear on the visualization, um, right? So the smaller it is towards like minus negative, the, the more redder it is going to be, right? It's something like that. And then if we are visualizing the weights, right? If we're visualizing the weights, we also use the, this entire notion. So the bigger it is towards the plus infinity, the greener it is. And maybe in case of the weights, we can even increase the thickness of this thing. So as you can see, it's like, if it's very big, it's going to be super strong, uh, like in terms of uh, right in, in terms of the connection if it's if it's too if it's negative or like completely towards like minus infinity we, we can say that this particular connection is completely deactivated and non-existent and maybe not even draw it at all right that would be interesting as well right so it's just like uh b basically the training process converges to the state where we deactivated this entire connection this is by the way these uh, neural networks are fully connected right they're fully connected and you don't really need partially connected neural networks because if you don't need a particular connection the training process will just deactivate one of the weights it will just set it to zero and that's it this connection does not exist anymore it does not connect this to neural networks so essentially what the training does it kind of brute forces uh, all of the possible connections between the neurons until it finds the circuitry that kind of solves your problem right but it's not like a full brute force it's like a partial brute force it's a 
it's a very much guided brute force, right? Because we're competing the gradient, right? And gradients basically tells us the direction in which we have to move, right? So it's a, it's a brute force, but it's a guided brute force, uh, right? So, and once we have this visualization, so instead of printing the text, we would say, okay, generate me the, the image of this neural network. So I want to look at how it looks like, like overall. Uh, and then I could open it in, a, in some sort of like a viewer or something like that and see. But furthermore, maybe I can render this entire stuff in real time. That would have been interesting as well. So essentially, uh, when we're training, right, so let's actually take a look at how we're training. Uh, so I'm going to... Uh, open the editor. Uh, maybe I'm going to just disable the changes that I've done to the editor uh, and I'm going to recompile the entire editor. Uh, all right. And uh, I'm going to just run uh, this entire editor and uh, it didn't. Oh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we're just printing the cost, right? And as you can see, cost goes down and everything. Uh, it will be kind of cool that our system, instead of like, you know, spamming into the standard output, it would open like a, an entire window. Like, holy shit, a, a window, a graphical window in 2023, holy f without a browser? That would have been amazing. What kind of alien technology is that? Holy fuck. So imagine if we start the application and it opens the graphical fucking window. Holy fuck. And then instead of like printing the cost, it like graphs the cost as it like, sh like uh, basically drives down. And on top of that, in the middle of the screen, it would show you the visualization of that freaking goddamn neural network with all of the weights and biases colored, colored differently. And in real time shows you how the neural network converges. Like you could see in real time how the weights are either become very activated or very deactivated and biases and holy fucking shit. Yo, what the fuck? So that would be kind of cool, I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but that kind of doesn't solve the problem if the neural network is too big. You know what I mean? That kind of doesn't solve the problem. <clears throat> uh, so, essentially, uh, right, if you have a lot of uh, neurons in uh, your layer, right, so like maybe thousands of them, right? So thousands of neurons in here and a lot of neurons in here. So how are we going to fucking visualize this entire shit? That, that's kind of strange, right? Like, um, what we can do? So one of the ideas I had uh, right before the stream, and the, the one of the ideas that actually triggers the today's stream, is basically, uh, let's partition the neurons of the activation layer. Right, essentially, so we have a lot of neurons in here. Let's split them into chunks that we can uh, can put on the screen, right? So for instance, like thousands of them, let's actually split them into maybe four chunks. Four chunks, right? <laughs> or something like that, right? And also let's split this thing into like three chunks. So it would be nice if all of the chunks were sort of equal, right? And then uh, we can look at these two chunks. So this neuron, is connected, right? It's connected to all of the neurons of these specific chunks, right? All of the neurons of this specific chunk. It's also connected to all the neurons in these chunks and so on and so forth, but doesn't matter. Let's actually focus on these two chunks, right? So the next neuron in this chunk is also connected to all of these things in these particular chunks and uh, so on and so forth. So these two chunks are fully connected because it's a fully connected neural network. Right. So that means all of these sort of, sort of like sub neural networks are also connected. And these connections form like a sub matrix of the bigger matrix of the weights and biases. Okay, what if we just visualize these neural networks and instead of visualizing individual neurons, we're going to uh, visualize these chunks as the neurons right and these full connections as the single connection and the uh, color and sort of like thickness that we're going to uh, visualize all of that with is going to be just average of all of these weights and biases right so the neuron in here is going to be let's take an average of all of the biases of these uh, activations and all of the average of this thing but this thing as, as far as no doesn't really have any activations it's so the input layer input uh, neurons are going to be basically gray i suppose because you, you're supposed to put something in them right you're supposed to put something in them and uh, yeah so and we just take an average and we consider all of these connections as a single connection and that way we can just like take a look at this neural network from the from the higher 
higher level, right? So it's overview overall. So we can try to visualize that as well. So I don't know if that's a good idea, by the way. I don't know if that's a good idea because I never tried it. I just literally got this idea because I was thinking, how can I visualize like a huge neural network? Right, how can I visualize that? I suppose you can just like compress some of the information. Of course, some of the information is going to be lost, uh, but still you can have some interesting overview of this entire stuff. Uh, right. So, and that will be nice. So, and that will allow you to actually display arbitrary big uh, neural networks, of course, with the loss of information, but you will still be able to visualize them. Uh, right. So, and that's exactly what I wanted to try to do today. Uh, right, create an algorithm that basically will allow you to visualize this entire stuff. If the neural network is very small, I think we can make something smart, right? So essentially, if it's small and fits on the screen, we're gonna just like visualize it as usual. As it becomes bigger and bigger, we start to partition it into chunks and visualize it as like chunks. Right. And maybe we're going to have some sort of a zoom level, right? If you pass a zoom level uh, big enough, it's actually make the chunks smaller. So the resolution of the whole image is going to be bigger. So we can see more details and can zoom in and zoom out. Right. And it just determines the the size of the chunks that you're using. Right. Or something like that. It's kind of like how three three D engines do that. Right. So three D engines actually the the farther the further you look into the distance the less details you have in there the the more details are compressed into like less stuff right so it's kind of like that uh right we can try to do something similar uh right and may, maybe in ui you'll be able to scroll with a wheel unfortunately my, my scroll wheel doesn't work so i won't be able to actually test this magical technology of 2023 of scrolling the wheel holy fuck but maybe people who are living in the first world country and uh, can actually afford this magical device with a scroll wheel will actually test that for me and tell me that yes zosin it does work so um <laughs> so that's the idea for today's stream. <laughs> so that was the intro. That was basically the intro. Did you like the intro? Right? So I think that was a pretty good intro. So uh, let's actually talk about money. Right? So it's, it's, a, it's a business time. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Nutix. Jeff, I think I acknowledged you yesterday. Uh, so Cap uh, Captain Cloudpants, thank you so much for uh, Twitch Prime's question with the message. Uh, hey! Oh, hey. Hello, hello. Uh, Shane ETC, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Uh, I'm a robot with 100 bit and a message GUI in 2023. It's magic. Billy approve. I, I don't remember how Billy approve. I, I, I think it's the when the Billy just like wiggles his so like uh, uh, finger or something like that. Yeah, Billy does in fact approve. As we can. Uh, Lindra Braga, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you with the message. Uh, hello. And I'm a robot again uh, with uh, Twitch Prime subscription with the message 38 fucking months. Crazy. That it is indeed a crazy, my friend. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> cheers, by the way. Um, let's see what we can do with all that. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna start with something probably simple. Maybe I'm going to create uh, a separate application, right? So, basically, um, I don't know, dump uh, NN, uh, and it's gonna be C, right? So, and in here, uh, I'm going to just include the NN, right? NN.h, uh, eh, NN.h. And here we're going to simply create the neural network, right? So a simple neural network. And we're going to allocate uh, some architecture. For some reason, I can never remember uh, the convention. Okay, so first comes the actual array of the um, of the layers, of so the sizes of the layers, and the count, how many, how many layers you have. For some reason, I can never remember the order of these two things. Uh, it's it's the usual the the usual array order in C. Okay, so I think that's that makes sense. Um, okay, so and in here, let's say uh, we're gonna uh, visualize like a Zor neural network: two input layers, uh, two hidden layers, and one output layer. Right. So we're gonna pass arch, and uh, this one is gonna be array length arch. There we go. Uh, and I'm gonna return this entire stuff in here, and then uh, print, and then. I'm going to go into the build.sh and 
so this was dump and n. Mm, dump and n. Okay. And let's rebuild this entire shot. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we also need to NN a lock. Okay, so uh, that means I forgot to actually define an NN implementation. Right, so this is very important because without an NN implementation, this entire thing acts like a header, so it doesn't have any implementations of the declarations that we included in here, right? So it doesn't act like a C file. So you have to specifically include this entire stuff, and that should uh, work. That should work. Okay. So dump NN. Cool. Uh, so maybe it would make sense to also randomize this entire thing, right? So we have some random data. Uh -huh. Build, build dot sh a boom. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and yeah, so we also have to specify the range, so we can see some stuff. Mm, cool. So how are we gonna initialize it for now? So for now, I just wanna do like an you know, a sketch of the uh, of the whole visualization algorithm. And I, I don't want to spend too much time to to think about like initializing the window window and stuff like that. I just want to quickly prototype something. And uh, it happened. So I developed a library specifically for that. <laughs> right. If I want to just throw some stuff onto into the like um, um, into the image file, right, I can just use Olivets, right? And this is precisely what this library was created for, just to quickly visualize some things, uh, right? So, yeah. So we have like the whole series on developing this entire library. And surprisingly, even though this library was supposed to be just like for debugging purposes and for just quick prototyping stuff, it is capable of doing a lot of shit for some reason. Uh, but to be fair, the, the cool shit that it's capable of doing is actually more of a demos, but Maybe in the future I actually move some stuff from the demo. See, it can even do 3D, yes. <laughs> right, so uh, we're gonna just basically... Um, it's surprising me, it's actually kind of kind of slow, probably because I have a uh, Twitch opened or something. Uh, right, so let's uh, download this library, right? So let's download this library. Um, C. Uh -huh. So it's somewhere here. There we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I need to take the library role. Mm -mm. So mm -mm -mm. Uh, now, let's include this entire stuff into here. Right, let's include this entire stuff into here, and we're going to do uh, olivets.c. Uh, and also, it's also header-only library, so uh, as far as I know, you also have to include olivets uh, implementation, right? So this is basically what you have to do. Uh, define olivets implementation. So here, we probably need to define the resolution of this entire stuff, right? So. Uh, let's do something like um, uh, width, right? Maybe like image width uh, is going to be 800 and image height, uh, like image height 600. So, if, uh, and we have to allocate the pixels of the image, right? So we have to allocate the pixels. So this is going to be like pixels. Uh, maybe we're going to call it image pixels, right? So, and everything with the prefix image is actually related to the image that we're going to be dumping onto into the file system, right? Image width and uh, image height, right? So, and uh, what we have to do in here, we have to create the canvas, right? So I don't quite remember how we create the canvas. I suppose, yeah, yeah. So you provide also stride, okay? So because I, a little bit, uh, I forgot how this entire library works a little bit. So with this canvas, uh, we're gonna say EMG, right? So, and we're gonna construct the canvas. Uh, canvas, okay. And uh, this is gonna be pixels, image pixels, image width, uh, right? Image height, and the stride is image width, right? So this is what we've got. So after that, we can try to just fill everything with a certain color, right? So let's do fill uh, image with a color, let's say, uh, right, it's going to be a red color, just to see if this entire thing, thing works. We, we need something to save uh, this thing uh, as maybe PNG, right? So let's actually use another separate library, <laughs> right? So we're adding a lot of dependencies today, right? 
maybe I can actually copy paste some stuff from from Olivetti uh, itself, right? I didn't think I need to go to to the website. Uh, so I think we have dependent, yeah, dev dependencies, right? And let me do STB image right. Um, so I have to open this thing. Uh huh. And let's do dump and n. Uh, and let's define stb image write implementation, right, something like this. And we're going to include stb image write.h. Right. So let me take a look at this library. stbi write png. We're going to be using png for this specific case, right? So the file path, uh, let's say const char image file path, right, is going to be equal to uh, like nnpng, right? So nnpng. And let's actually pass this thing in here, uh, file path. So the width, as we know, is image width. The height is image height. The amount of components is four, right? So RGBA, uh, four components. The data is the pixels, right? So it's going to be image uh, data. I think I think it's just pixels. To be fair, since I'm saving specifically Olivet's canvas, it probably would make sense to, instead of width and height, to take image width, right? Image width. Uh, width and image height. I think that makes much more sense and in, in terms of stride uh, image width uh, actually stride yeah so we, we specifically have stride uh, stride multiplied by size of u int 32 t there we go and uh, if this entire operation fails it actually returns false and this is where we can uh, report that to the user Our error could not uh, save file uh, this, right? And the, the file name is image file path. I'm going to return non zero exit code. If everything went uh, fine, uh, we can say saved and then to uh, S, right? And uh, image file path, there we go. Isn't that poggers? Isn't that poggers? I think it's pretty freaking poggers, my friend. Uh, so um, let's uh, go. Let's uh, go. I don't know if, why my computer is extra slow today. Maybe it's literally that. Okay, so this is what we managed to generate. <laughs> so this is the new, this is the neural network. So all of the biases here are negative and they take up the entire screen. So that's why it looks like a solid red rectangle. <laughs> Look how dense this neural network is. It's just extremely freaking dense, like holy shit. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a chat GPT. It's a GPT-4. It's a, a one trillion parameters and all of them are negative. So, <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, what we literally did, right? What we literally did is just like, oh my God. Uh, fill everything with red. So that's, that's the single line because we're testing things, right? So we're just like testing how this entire stuff works. How this entire stuff works. Uh, so, okay, uh, what else can we do? Uh, what else can we do? We can probably take a look at the architecture, right? So, and for example, on the first layer, uh, we have uh, two, uh, two neurons, right? Uh, so let me, let me see. I'm going to start with uh, maybe doing something like this. I'm going to iterate each individual uh, each individual input layer, input neuron, so to speak, right? So this is going to be arch zero, uh, right? So I'm iterating that. And here, what I need to draw, I need to start drawing, I suppose, circles, right? So in Olivet, uh, we have Olivet fill, uh, and actually not fill, just circle. Yeah, there we go. So there's a function called circle. Uh, we can specify the center of the circle and uh, radius and the color. So let's actually use, let's utilize that specific function. So we're gonna uh, draw and circles. So as the canvas will specify the image. And where is going to be the center of this entire thing? Where is going to be the center? So the center, I suppose, uh, it's going to be somewhere uh, like where it starts, right? So essentially, we're going to have some sort of a like a layer uh, X. This is like where the layer current layer starts. We don't really know where exactly it starts. Uh, plus I multiplied by the, um, you know, layer padding, right? Because we are, uh, no, not really. 
so it's a vertical thing, right? So it's a, it's a vertical thing. We're uh, drawing all of these circles vertically, right? So that means regardless of the current uh, neuron, uh, the, the X is going to stay the same. The X is going to stay the same. So that means so we can just say that the center of the, of the circle is at layer X. And layer X is the X position of the layer. Not X position, but X space position. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, right, so it's going to be the same, the same. But in terms of Y, in terms of Y, it's going to be layer Y plus I multiplied by some sort of a padding between the circles. And what's interesting is that we don't really know what these values are. Like, we don't know how to compute layer X, layer Y, and layer pad. Uh, maybe we can call it V-pad, right, so because it's vertical padding. Uh, there's no really horizontal padding, but maybe we can denote the horizontal padding as the uh, distance between the layers, right? Maybe that's uh, basically what we, we can say in here. Right, and this is what we defined. So, and in terms of the radius, we can say, maybe we're going to have some sort of a value, which is a neuron, uh, neuron radius, right? Neuron radius, and here we're going to have uh, some sort of a color. For now, I think I'm going to just set the color to just red. Uh, right, uh, FF, zero, 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 FF. So we also want to have some sort of a background, right? So um, let's, let's say neuron, neuron color, right? So this is a neuron color. Uh, and uh, we're going to have some stuff, uh, neuron color which is going to be like literally red. Let's put red in here. And uh, let's also have the background color. So my favorite background color is the background that I have in my text editor, right? So, and usually what I do, I just set this background like in all of the applications as the default background, right? So, because it's kind of convenient. All right, and what's cool about this specific background is actually super simple in terms of hex. Uh, the hex code of this background is 18, 18, 18, right? So that's literally it. So that's the, the background. It's just like, it's not black. Uh, but it's like grayish. Black is a little bit too harsh on, on the eyes. Uh, I think a little bit grayish, like a little bit brighter is actually way better. Yeah. So that's what I like to, to do in here. All right, so in background color, we're going to set the background color in here. And if we try to compile this into, I think it's not going to compile because we have some of the missing variables, right? So we, uh, yeah, so there's some stuff in here. We have a missing layer X, uh, we have a missing layer Y, uh, VPAD, and so on and so forth, right? So for now, I can say, all right, so let's set layer X as the, uh, in the middle of the screen, right? So we can say image width uh, divided by two, that's gonna be layer X, okay. In terms of layer, uh, layer Y, layer Y is gonna be rather interested, interesting, right? Because essentially how we can think about this entire stuff, right? <clears throat> how we can think about, about this entire stuff. I want this uh, neural network to be inside of the image, right? So essentially, uh, something like this. Uh, inside of the image. But as you can see, I don't really want the neural network to touch the, the edges of the image itself. So there should be some sort of a padding there should be some sort of a padding between like a top, bottom up and left and uh, and right all right, right some sort of a padding between like those things and uh the question is like how much padding do we want to have in here uh right so maybe we're going to have some sort of like a variables in here that determine uh the padding or maybe we're going to have some sort of a value that determines the uh the height Right, the, the maximum height of this entire stuff, right? So the maximum height. And you have to feed this entire stuff into that specific height. Uh, right, so, or maybe... Mm, 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 mm. So, you see, the problem here is that... Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, let's actually start up with something uh, very simple where essentially we just have a fixed width in here because I don't really want to have a fixed width, uh, right? And uh, probably it's going to be obvious when I actually implement that. So let's actually start with a fixed width. Uh, let's actually start with a fixed width. Uh, so um, let's say that we're going to have some sort of a layer height, right? So this is the layer height. Um, uh, this is the layer height and uh, Essentially, we want 
divided by two. We probably want to start with image height uh, divided by two. Right, so that gives us the center, uh, the vertical center of this entire stuff. So this is here. And from here, we want to subtract half of the height of the layer, right? We want to subtract half of the height of the layer, uh, like so. And that gives us the layer, uh, the layer Y, the layer Y where it all starts, right? Uh, so this is basically how we can get this entire thing. So the only thing that is left is what exactly is uh, layer height? Right, obviously layer height has to be less than, uh, you know, the image height. It has to be less than the image height, but how much? Uh, right, so uh, we have a layer V-pad, right, so this is a layer V-pad, but th this is the padding between the activation things, right, so this is the padding between the activation things. Uh, and I also want to have some sort of a padding in here, uh, sort of like a layer, um, Mm. border pad we can we can call it a border pad right so this is going to be a border pad uh, and since we have a padding from uh top and the bottom we kind of need two of them right we, we kind of need two of them and uh so layer border padding uh how much do we want to have in here let's say we're going to have uh maybe 50 pixels right so this is going to be sort of like a, a constant right something like that uh, VPAD, uh, VPAD, I suppose, is rather easy to compute, right? It is rather easy to compute based on the layer height and the amount of uh, amount of like uh, neurons in the layer, right? So I think the layer VPAD is the only thing that is not defined in here. Uh, also neuron radius, so but maybe this is something that needs to be uh, defined some way here, right? So neuron radius, let's say, is going to be something like uh, 25. Right. It's kind of nice to like have all of these parameters like in a like, close proximity because then it would be super easy to just modify all of these things. So, so for now we have like a layer border pad. Uh, it's 50, 25, and we'll be able to modify them, and it like feels like CSS, right? So. People who watch me for quite some time know that when I'm visualizing something, I like to have like a sort of like a CSS section where you can tweak the parameters and just like position things like around and stuff like that. So it's kind of it's kind of useful, I think. I think it's kind of useful. So the only thing that we have in here is the layer V pad. And uh, how can we even de uh, define this entire thing? Well, we could try to just basically take the layer height and divide it by the amount of uh, neurons in here. And the amount of neurons in here is arch zero because that's the thing that we're talking about right now. Uh, so, but maybe we should have it as a separate constant, maybe layer count, right? So let's actually define it like this. So this is gonna be a layer count. Uh, we're gonna put it in here and we already refer to arch zero in here. This is the layer count uh, like so. So this is what we have in here, but this is not particularly great, uh, I think. So this is going to be sort of like the distance and it's uh, not going to center them properly, but we'll see. Um, right, so let's actually try to go ahead and run this entire thing and, and see what it will generate, right? If it, if it will generate anything at all. Uh, I think I should disable O3 because usually when I'm streaming, uh, like doing full optimization, yeah, it, it generated an end.png. Uh, uh, we can see an end.png and how does it look like? Yeah, so, so this is how it looks like. Uh, right. So the, the problem, okay, the, the problem with using the, um, how is it called, um, the, the Emacs as a viewer here is that uh, we have the same color as the background for for this thing and for the editor but, but maybe that's fine it's kind of difficult to see the the borders of this entire thing but as far as i know uh in olivet olivet oh, okay uh olivet uh frame right in olivet's frame uh, we have a function olivet's frame right so and uh, basically you can specify the rectangle and it will just literally create the frame for for you right so then we will be able to see like how all of that looks like so i think it's going to be rather convenient so we fill everything in here maybe we can do that after we uh, like render this entire thing all right somewhere here uh right so then we can say image it starts at zero 
zero and then image width but actually minus one right because image width is like overflows this entire thing a little bit uh, by one pixel specifically because it's the amount of pixels not the index of the pixel then we can say okay thickness is going to be like around uh let's say frame thick right so frame thick and uh, the color is going to be let's say frame color right so we have we're going to have two constants in here u int uh, 32 frame thick uh, let's say it's going to be 10 pixels and frame color is going to be kind of like a background i think but maybe a little bit brighter right let's actually say it is oh my god emacs 20 20 20 right? and uh now i'm going to also disable the optimization because it's like it compiles for too long for me on my my stuff and it's a little bit faster so let's take a look and this is what we can see can, can you see the frame uh, it's kind of difficult to see but if i zoom in uh maybe it should be a little bit brighter just just a tiny bit brighter uh, right but it's it's needed just as an indication so we can clearly see what's going on in here so maybe we could query replace 20 with 25 boom right something like this uh, all righty so uh, yeah that's fine as far as now we can even now do something like this emacs has a uh, revert mode right so outer uh, revert mode which means that now we should be able to do some interesting chat for instance zero zero f uh, and then I, when i recompile right when i recompile this entire thing uh it should yeah it should automatically update just it takes some time i suppose uh but that was actually kind of cool so maybe we can now properly work with all that uh so let's go back so uh here's the problem right as you can see so they are kind of like shifted a little bit they are not really centered properly or anything so that kind of sucks uh so uh, this is because uh this is where they start so the the line uh of the start uh, goes in here and then in here so what we effectively did we took the the entire section we took the entire section and we divided it by the amount of things and because of that by, by the amount of neurons and because of that neurons basically snapped to the beginning of that cell if that makes any, any sense so one of the things we have to do probably i think we need to um center this neurons center this neurons at this at the center of the cell uh right and uh, so that means um, in terms of padding, we actually have to add, uh, right, add half of the layer v pad, right? So just like half of that, and it will center them at like those cells, so to speak. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'm gonna actually make the frame even more, uh, like obvious AA. That was too much. Uh, okay so that's what we have so this is one single layer this is one single layer isn't that poggers isn't that poggers i think it's pretty freaking poggers uh anyways so but this is only one like specific current layer right so layer count in here so because we had coded the the current layer one of the things we probably uh, want to do now is to unhard code the layer I think right so now maybe we want to actually do uh, size tj 0 j and this is going to be arch count uh, plus plus j and just put that uh, like in a loop in here so now we are rendering everything but since we are using like the same uh, sort of x everywhere uh, it, they're all going to be stuck in the in the same line right so they're all going to be stuck in the same line uh, and uh, it's not arch count. This is because I never uh, created such variable anywhere. So let's actually create it arch count, and we're gonna just like copy paste this entire thing in here. Arch count, uh, boom, boom. There we go. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, and, and the PNG. There we go. So they are all in the same place. So, and you can't even see like how many of them uh, like you have in there, uh, right? So we can try to maybe even uh, like add like four, four, two, and maybe one in here, right? So this is how, how it's gonna look like and it's gonna look kind of like meh. Yeah, so it's just like, 
<laughs> it generated a bunch of things. So one of the things we need to do now, we need to kind of repeat the, um, you know, the, how is, how to say that? Uh, the great, uh, the, the great stuff in here, right? So we need to repeat the, the same thing that we did vertically, right? Uh, we did vertically where we had a sort of like a grid of things vertically, but now we have to repeat that horizontally. That's what we need to do now, right? We need to repeat that horizontally. And what that means is that we need to have a, a, like um, a layer border pad, but this is actually V pad, right? Uh, this is actually specifically v, v pad, uh, right? And we need to have something like a layer H pad. So the thing like uh, it needs to be padded uh, on the left and on the right in here, right? So that's what we need to do in here on the left and on the right. So that means we have to say, let's say that is going to be, so this entire stuff is going to be like this, uh, border V pad, uh, right? And this is going to be border H pad, uh, border H pad. And it's also going to be 50, right? So let's say that it's also going to be 50. Uh, right, and because of that, all right, because of that, we probably want to have something like um, uh, an N width. An N width is actually image width uh, minus layer border H pad, right? Layer border H pad uh, multiplied by two, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So I think the naming is kind of meh. I think the naming is kind of meh. Hmm, the naming is kind of meh. Uh, yeah. You know what I want to do? I want to make a small break, but also I want to finish this thing, right? So I don't think I'm going to make a, a break until I finish this entire stuff. So this is the width, right? So this is basically the width. And uh, so we need to have now like a layer uh, layer pad, right? So then actual layer pad. So an analog of this thing, uh, layer uh, H pad, right? So this is a layer H pad. And in here, essentially what we do, we take the image width, right? So this is image width uh, divided by two and divide by the half of the width, right? So this is basically where it starts. And this is basically where we have to do CX. And I think CX is gonna be the same for the whole layer. So CX is the same for the whole layer, and maybe because of that, we don't have to define it inside of that loop, right? So I think it's gonna be like that. So uh, layer X, though, it actually depends on how we define layer X. No, let's actually keep it in here. I think it makes more sense in here. So in terms of image width, so we were just dividing this by image width, but we have to do instead now, right? What we have to do instead is essentially uh, do something like image um, mm -hmm. uh, image width so layer y is the thing no I need to make a small break I need to make a small break because my brain uh, stopped uh, being able to visualize this entire stuff and uh, without being able to visualize this entire stuff I can't continue so I need to make a small break and a cup of tea so um, all right, I've got my tea, I've got my everything. Let's uh, go, uh, let's uh, go and uh, see what we can do in here. So X, right, so essentially what we have to do, we have to take the uh, neural network width and I feel like um, a lot of some, like some of this stuff, I think this should be also cor called uh, like NN height instead of layer height. Uh, because as of right now, it is in fact an uh, NN height, right? So. And an N height. Uh, N, N, N. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, right, so we want to take the width and what we want to divide it by the amount of the, uh, the layers in here. Right, and it will create a similar problem as we had with uh, like vertical stuff. So basically it will snap it to the left. But maybe for, uh, for vertical alignment, it's kind of fine, I think. It's kind of fine. So uh, let's see how it's going to look like. So something went wrong, a layer H pad. So this is the vertical padding and okay, so I didn't really 
really use this entire thing. Uh, layer H pad. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So why why am I doing uh, it this way? Why am I doing it this way? Uh, so because I'm not. Um, yeah. So this is supposed to be V pad. Yeah. yeah so this is supposed to be v, v pad. Uh, layer. Um, H pad. Right. So this is a layer H pad. And in here. Uh, layer H pad multiplied by J. So we probably have to swap I and J, but I was actually developing this thing inside out. So that's kind of a that's kind of a problem in here, right? That's kind of a problem. Uh, okay, so let's take and this is how it looks like. So yeah, the fact that it snapped to the center is not particularly great, uh, though. That's okay, actually. Okay, it looks better than I expected. Surprisingly. Okay, that looks way better than expected. The only thing we need to do is just like, uh, when I'm doing that stuff, right? So this is a layer X. Uh, I just have to add half of the of that thing, right? So it's gonna be a layer uh, V pad. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm having uh, like a huge brain fart. But yeah, yeah, I do have a huge brain fart right now. Um, <clears throat> so I do have a huge brain fart. So I have a layer border H pad, right? So this is a layer or border, border H pad, and I have and then width, and that's the width of the whole thing, right? And then I also have the padding, uh, but this entire stuff actually starts from a different place, right? So it actually starts from a different place. Uh, it's supposed to start somewhere at image width, uh, image width, um, minus half, uh, like half of that, minus and then width, uh, half of that, right. And then we have, we're supposed to take this thing, right, we're supposed to take this thing and add, and that should kind of work, I think. Uh, that should kind of work, but I'm, I'm think I'm being an idiot, uh, right? Uh, yeah, that kind of worked, but it basically went outside. Why it went outside like that? Because maybe because of this? Oh yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so that's a good neural network. It's a good neural network plus uh, layer of H2. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's actually very simple. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just having a brain fart today. So yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. Um, just having a brain fart today, just having a brain fart. Uh, okay, that's poggers, I suppose. Uh, that's pretty poggers. That's an actual like neural network. It does look like a neural network to some extent. <clears throat> so we can even say, uh, right, we can even say that we have to do it like that, which makes it kind of symmetrical in here, right? So yeah, that, that makes it very much symmetrical. So this one is also symmetrical. Uh, and this one is also all right. Um, yesu, yesu, yesu. This is the height and... All right, not bad. Not bad at all. Mm, pretty cool algorithm. A pretty cool algorithm. So the next thing we need to do, we need to actually uh, sort of like connect all of these things together, if you know what I mean. All right, we need to connect all of these things together. Uh, so I want to uh, rename J to L to indicate that we are iterating the layer, right? We're essentially iterating the layer. Uh, so let me go through the compilation error. So this is uh, one thing and this is another thing. 
and here we are iterating through the current activation layer right so we iterate into the current activation layer and uh, the problem here is that we probably want to also iterate through uh, the activations of the next layer right so we need to do like activations of the next layer so let's actually quickly quickly try to do that as well here so for each uh, thing in a current layer, right? So for each thing in a current layer, we're going to be iterating the thing in the next layer because we want to connect those things with the lines, uh, right? So we want to be able to connect those things with lines. So J, now this is the next layer, uh, right? So this is a layer count, uh, but I think like layer count, uh, this is like the, the, the current layer count, right? So this is the, the current layer count. Is it even useful like that? Is it even useful like that? I feel like maybe it would be better to remove this notion because we're gonna have two counts now. Uh, right, so basically arch uh, L, uh, right, and another one here is arch L, right? So that makes sense. And now when we're iterating thing here, we're iterating actually R uh, arch L plus one, uh, plus plus J, but that will not work uh, if, L is the last layer and this is kind of true right this is kind of true because uh, there is no next layer if we are the last layer like there is like nothing you can do in here so there is nothing to, to connect things with so because of that we can say that it makes sense only if L plus one is less than uh, arch count right only then it makes sense to actually do that loop in the first place make sense hopefully that makes sense anyway uh, so and essentially, we need to find CX for the next uh, for the next uh, activation in there, right? We need to find that CX. So we can say maybe this one uh, has to be something like one, and this is one, and this is one. But we also need to find CX two and CY two, and connect them with the line. And as far as I know, uh, Olivet, uh, Olivet, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry has uh, the the function line right it does in fact have a function line so we can just go ahead and do image uh, cx1 uh, cy1 cx2 and cy2 man like all of this is so freaking useful uh right because like yeah it has all of this predefined shape that, that they can just grab and just like render things uh right so that's actually kind of cool. So in here is the color, and we can probably use the same color as the neuron color. Uh, we can make it so, sort of like a connection color, right? So connection color. Uh, and we can define connection color some way here. Uh, connection color. Uh, and for now, we can say that it's a neuron color as well, because why not? Uh, right, so this is the connection, connection color. But the question is like, what are those things? Well, so I suppose layer X and layer Y uh, are going to be the same, right? So this is basically where uh, the neural network starts. To be fair, those are not layer X and layer Y. This is basically the position, left top position of the whole neural network. So I believe this entire thing should have been called NNX and this entire thing should have been called NNY. That, way makes, uh, that thing makes way more sense. So this is the vertical padding, but this is a vertical padding with respect to the current layer. So everything seems to be fine. Okay, so that means we can uh, calculate this stuff in a similar way, right? So it's gonna be NN, uh, and then either X or Y uh, plus L multiplied by H pad, but H pad, it doesn't depend on the, uh, on the current layer. So that means this is totally fine. So in terms of X, this is the same except we have to do l plus one right for the next one uh this one v pad is a little bit different because it does in fact depend on the current layer so we can say maybe it's gonna be i don't know man i don't really know so it, it's either have to rename this entire thing or recompute uh, it in here I could just recompute it in here and say vpad uh, 
2. We can actually call it 1, because we already have a convention that for the current player we have CX1, CY1, so, and Repad uh, is actually kind of similar in that regard, so that means we can just do it like this. Uh, Repad 2 is basically plus 1, uh, which allows us to use literally the same formula in here, it's just like, uh, pull, uh, you know, we have to use the second one in here, so this is going to be the second one. And that is it, I believe so, actually. That is, in fact, it. And it's kind of, the whole code is rather symmetrical, I really like how it looks like. And to be fair, if you look at that, uh, and then width, and then width does not depend on anything, so we could have put that in here. Um, so vpad, vpad is defined in here. So that means NNH and NN height are not particularly dependent. So I can move this entire thing in here and I can move all of this stuff in here. So all of that stuff is actually not dependent on the loop. So it kind of simplifies the loop. So the only thing that is dependent on the current layer is layer VPAD1. Uh, right, so this is obviously dependent and all. Yeah, so the whole thing became actually simpler, right? So yeah, that's cool. Mm, 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 mm. All right, so uh, let me take a look at PNG uh, and <laughs> well, it almost worked. Uh, it almost worked. <laughs> uh, all right. I suppose the main problem here is that. <laughs> Yeah. Almost. Uh, almost worked. That's very interesting, actually. So, uh, again, it almost worked. Right, so it almost worked. It's just like I had to move this thing uh, down there. So that means there's another type of somewhere uh, in, in there. So let's actually find out. Uh, in terms of why, uh, I think... Um, oh, yeah, okay, so that makes sense actually, in, in the same place, in the same place, uh, in the same place. If you look at that, doesn't look a poggers? A poggy woggy woggers? Yo, man, that, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> this is an actual Nero, and it doesn't look even that bad. I thought it's gonna look horrible, but it's fine. Surprisingly, surprisingly fine. Uh, yep. <laughs> Man, I love this. Right, I love this. And, okay, so... Let me, let me see. So, interestingly, if we try to use a different color for the connections, right? So, here we're just using uh, the red one, but what if we used, uh, like, the blue one? Right. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Um... Yeah, it's actually a green one. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so essentially, they basically overlap. So one of the things we probably have to do, we have to draw the circles after we drew the connections. So it should be relatively easy. Uh, so basically, like, put the actual drawing in here. Right, so we compute the coordinates before we iterate in the, the next layer. Right, but this is because um, it's needed to draw the line. But we draw an actual circle after, so they're always on top of the lines. Right. Mm -mm. All right, so uh, what do we have in heaven here? Right, so that, that looks uh, much better now. That looks much better. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we can try uh, like different configurations. The, this is obviously a random uh, neural network, absolutely random neural network. Uh, so let's try to use this Zor one. Uh, and Zor one is essentially two to one. Right, that looks, it should look nice, I think. Um, so this is a Zor ne uh, neural network. Uh, then uh, we can maybe have something like uh, adder. Let's take a look at the adder, right? So uh, we, had an, we had an adder and the adder looks like this, right? So the adder looks like this and uh, you need to specify the bits. So let's actually specify bits as two. Uh, and let's see how many of them we're going to have. Right, so this is how it looks like. This looks cool. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. 
So all of the all of our paddings and stuff like that, they don't take into account the size of the neuron, right? So if we have too many of these things, right? If we, if I start like adding three uh, of these things, right, it starts to like pile up, uh, you know. But that's pretty interesting. Hmm. So four now. Mm -mm -mm. All right, that's boogers. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> like, uh, I'm just, just didn't expect that it's gonna turn out this this good. Uh, all right, so let's go back to our original thingy. So original thingy was all right, I suppose. It was just like four or something, uh, right? So the next thing we need to do, the next thing we need to do, we need to actually render uh, those things based on their values, right? So we need to render them based on their values. Do we already randomize the neural network, uh, right? Do we do, and then, yeah, we do. Okay, so essentially I'm gonna start with the biases and we're gonna render the biases inside uh, on the, as the color of the neuron itself, right? As the color of the neuron itself. And the question is how are we gonna do all of that? Um, so the input layer, the when L is equal to zero, right? When the L is equal to zero, I think it should be just gray. I think it should be just gray because the, uh, the input doesn't really have any biases, right? So it doesn't really have any biases. The bias is specific to the, uh, to the, sp to the actual neuron, right? So the thing about this stuff, uh, the first layer in here is that these are not actual neurons. These are not actual neurons, this is like the input neurons. But uh, I don't know, do input neurons have some sort of a bias? But how, why would you do that? Right, you have an input data, you may have a bias and activation function on top of that. I think usually people don't do it like that. Yeah, I feel like not. Mm, it's not a thing, it doesn't make much sense, so anyway. So, because of that, uh, when uh, the L is equal to zero, right? So let's say um, we have we're gonna have a case when the L is, is greater than zero. But for for the rest of this stuff, it's gonna be like this. Uh -huh. uh, neuron color, uh, and here we can say okay, um, it's gonna be FF uh, 50, 50, 50. Well, let's take a look at that. There we go. So it's sort of like a deactivated, uh, not really activated. It doesn't have any information. We literally have no information about like uh, all any of that stuff. Mm, it's alright. Okay. So and uh, for this thing, we need to compute. Uh, the neuron color, right? So I'm gonna remove the uh, neuron color from here because it's not particularly known, right? It is not particularly known. Uh, and we're gonna be computing this entire thing ourselves. All right, we're gonna be computing this entire thing ourselves somehow. Mm. So the question is how we're gonna co be computing. Uh, we need some sort of an indicator, right? We need some sort of an indicator. Uh, how far this entire thing is yeah so the biases can have arbitrary values uh, the biases can have arbitrary values uh, so they can be like from minus negative or plus negative or plus <laughs> Minus negative plus negative plus minus infinity plus infinity, right? Uh, so we can literally try to squash any possible values of the of the bias with a sigmoid and we're gonna get the value from zero to one, which we, then we can use to interpolate between two colors, uh, for instance, like um, uh, red and green. So this is one of the things we can do as well. I think that's a cool idea actually. All right. So, and uh, do we have any interpolation in Olive C? Right, so do we have any interpolation? Uh, so I think we had something like a mix colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, mix colors. But this requires like a um, fraction or whatnot. So it doesn't accept any 
Mm. Uh, any stuff. Uh, I think we had more. Mix color 2, uh, mix color 3. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I think there was also blend. Blend color. Ah, it's just, it, it uses alpha in there. It uses alpha. Though, that could be actually super useful. That could be actually super useful. It uses alpha uh, of the second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It uses alpha of the second one. That means we can just basically take uh, the intensity of the bias, right? So essentially, we just need to take the current bias. We're going to take an N, a BS. The current layer is L, though not really. Uh, so zeros one is um, not available there. So that means we have to do minus one, uh, right? So this is minus one. Uh, the biases in our case, they are row zero, right? So this is a row zero. Uh, and the column is basically I, right? So this is basically I. So this is intensity. And we're going to basically put it into sigmoid. Sigmoid F, right? So we'll put it into sigmoid. And that gives us the basically an intensity. Let's let's call it some, something like S, right? So this is the S. It's a uh, value from 0 to 1. And we probably want to convert this entire thing to the value from 0 to 255 because we want to put that into the alpha. Right, we're going to put it into the alpha. So we can do literally uh, 255 F multiplied by that and maybe floor this entire thing. Uh, right, and just do something like 8. Maybe 32, right, because we're going to be shifting this shit around so it probably makes sense to actually make it 32. Uh, all right, so and uh, we can say that the original neuron so the bigger it is the more green it should be So that means the base color that we have in here uh, has to be red and we're gonna be blending this shit with um, Green or something like that. So let me take a look at the blend function Yeah, so this is how the blend function works, right? So this is the blend function we have to shove the uh, neuron color, a neuron color in there, and we have to do something like S. We have to shift it to to basically to the left several times. Oh my god! Oh, what's going on? I'm sorry. Um, okay. I don't know what's going on. It's just like my keyboard or whatever. Um, mm. S uh, twice one byte but we have to shift it by three right so it has to be three bytes in here uh right and then we have to basically uh combine this entire stuff with the green color right with the green color like so so we uh basically blended those two things together right so we blended those two things together so that should be a fine that should be a fine that so but this is because uh okay so this is because we are initializing those things with basically from zero to one so obviously they not going to be that interesting if we for instance initialize them with money handed to one to plus hundred so i think the in, the in that case they're going to be more interested interesting uh yeah so some of them are strictly red, uh, but there's nothing in between because I think the values are too big. Uh, what if we just do minus one and one? I think I think that's a good one. So I think that, that should give us a pretty interesting range, uh, right? So yeah, okay. So that's a pretty good range. So what do you guys think? And now, right, we can literally do the same shit with the weights. Right, so why not just do the same shit with the weights? Um, right, let's go ahead and uh, just do that. Uh, furthermore, we already know uh, how to basically interpolate between like several colors. We already developed the technology. The only thing we need to do now, right, the only thing we need to do is get the weight, uh, is get the weight of the uh, of the current thing, of the current connection, right? So it has to be the, the weight in here. As soon as we get the weight, right, as soon as we get the weight, somehow, uh, right, we can just like repeat the same thing. We can uh, create this thing. Uh, I suppose this has to be probably called A for alpha. Maybe I can literally call it alpha because in the context of the neural network, it's not clear what do we mean by A. Do we mean, uh, do we mean by A alpha or activation? Uh, right, is that alpha or activation? 
so uh, let me see. Uh, so then what I have to do in here, right? So I have to just put uh, weight in here, but essentially maybe I don't even need to, to have a separate variables in here. I can just do WS. And the question is, what are the indices? What are the indices, right? Uh, I don't quite remember like the order of the um, um, of the rows and columns in the matrix. Like we, what corresponds to what? Uh, right, what corresponds to what? So I probably have to draw that uh, in here. Right. So usually we have our activations somewhere here. So this is uh, an activation, the first activation, uh, and then uh, yeah. Okay, so essentially the row uh, right, the row is the current uh, activation and the column is the next activation, right? The column is the next activation. Uh, all right. So that means it's actually pretty straightforward. It's literally i and j, I think. I feel like it's going to end up being literally i and j. Eh, i and j. Yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, and here we call it a connection color. Uh, so I think I can just do it like that then. Uh -huh. So this is a neuron color. I'm going to call this a connection. Uh, connection color. There we go. Uh, connection color. And uh, I'm going to remove this entire connection color from here. And this is basically the whole algorithm right so there's warnings in here uh what the hell is going on and use variable s uh, and this is because it's supposed to be called wait what did i yeah i think i i did something weird so it's supposed to be alpha so and it's sig faulted right so it's sig faulted so that means it's not the correct order uh right <laughs> so all right no w wait what the fuck excuse me uh, I feel like maybe. Hmm. Actually, it has to be L. All right. All right. Hmm. I'm a bit confused on why it is okay. <clears throat> So I'm a bit confused uh, that why do we have to do just L in here for the current weight? This is sus. This is absolutely sus, my friends. This is absolutely sus. So that means the biases are kind of shifted. Yeah, okay, so the, the problem with the weight matrix is that it's not really, it does not correspond to one layer. The weight matrix corresponds to two layers, right? But biases correspond, okay. Yeah, 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 so it's a little bit confusing. So I think that's fine. I think that's fine. So zero corresponds to that. Uh, here is minus one. So yeah, that makes sense. So the problem in here is that this shit is kind of man right in terms of colors and stuff like that um maybe we could have picked something else right uh so essentially we could have two separate colors uh right so let's say uh negative so usually negative uh like low color and let's say in, in in our case low right now is red right so low uh, and this is a high color and this one is basically green uh, right so that's basically the colors we're talking about and uh, when we are computing this entire stuff we actually initialize these things with a low color right and we're mixing it with a high color right so this is uh, does not auto complete properly so this is the high color uh, right, this one is a low color, uh, and this one is um, a high color. So, and now I should be able to just basically tweak and modify them, right? So I should be able to tweak and modify them by modifying them in here specifically, uh, right? Okay. Mm. So 
So the high color has alpha. What? Uh -huh. Oh, that's what she mean. Jesus Christ! I, I need. To, I, I cannot focus on the on the current thing. Okay, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, so it breaks my flow right now. It really breaks my flow. Uh, okay, that's cool. And uh, so this is that. So this is low color. Okay, and now uh, zero FF zero 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 zero. Uh, so probably, yeah. Um, okay, finally. Okay, so we have a working setup where I can just experiment with these things. Where I can just experiment with these things. Um, okay, uh, now. So what kind of color would be better? Right, so complementing color. But what's interesting is that the um, red and green are basically complementing. But not really. I think uh, the complementing color for the green is more like a purplish, right? It's more like a purplish color. So, oh yeah. So the thing about complementing color is that the uh, if you, you they act like inverted masks, right? So if you invert the mask of the green, it will be sort of like a purplish, right? It's sort of like a purplish. Uh, yeah. So that's that's something. That's something interesting. Uh, maybe we could have, like, making it even bigger, like that, is probably gonna be. Oh, okay, so that's not bad. So, another interesting thing we could make, we could have made, is basically just make them more transparent, maybe? Um, but I don't know. So, something like purplish should be fine. Uh, right, something like purplish should be fine, probably. We can also try to do srand time uh, zero, right? Srand time zero. Uh, and uh, so I probably need to include the time. Right, so and every time we uh, update this thing, it's going to be a different neural network. Uh, right. That's actually pretty cool. Man, I really like that. Oh, I thought it's crashed. Uh, so the problem with using Emacs for viewing the images is that uh, it's like too slow. So one of the things I do is actually I do something like like this, right? Uh, right. Hopefully it's not. Yeah, maybe I can do it like this. And if I refresh the, goddamn, like Fech, Fech has the most annoying defaults. Um, okay, <laughs> so. Uh, one of the defaults it has is that uh, when I refresh it, it recenters the goddamn image. Like, who wants that? Right, so if you are refreshing an image, why the fuck would you screw up with the zoom? And what's funny is that fact developers realize that and it has a flag to disable that behavior. But why the fuck would you want this behavior in the first place if you're modifying the image and you zoomed in on a specific place? Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's just like new PDF, for instance, like the PDF viewer, uh, allows you to refresh the PDF and it doesn't screw up with the zoom by default because that's precisely what you want to have if you keep refreshing the document, right? Because you're modifying it, so you set up the zoom on a specific place for a reason. It just makes sense to make it the default behavior. Don't screw up with the zoom. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Um, and what's interesting is that the flag uh, for for doing that uh, zoom pictures to the screen uh, it's not intuitive. Like the name of that flag is completely unintuitive. Like I really like fair for how simple it is, right? But for a simple program, yeah, keep zoom VP, right? And it's not even about like refreshing or anything like that. It's just. <laughs> Swear to God. Uh, essentially, now when I want to view it on the stream, I have to set the background to black, and I also have to say keep zoom VP, and only them is it's going to have a reasonable behavior that I want. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just like sometimes I just can't help myself. So it's just like yeah, uh, and now it just like works a little better. Uh, okay, <laughs> so. Uh, and it's just like, I don't know why it annoys me so much, because, I mean, it, it's a waste of time. It's just like a waste of time. And it's, it could be easily fixed by just having a sensible default, 
just have a sensible default. Uh, right, so yeah, okay. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, so, all right, that's very, very interesting. Um, I'm already streaming for like one and a half of an hour. I didn't expect this is it will take this much time. So I'm not sure if we're gonna spend um, too much time on implementing the segmentation algorithm, right? You know, you know what I mean? Uh, a segmentation algorithm. So um, yeah, but one of the things I would like to be able to do is just to see how it modifies itself in real time, so to speak. We, we can try to do that, actually. We can try to do that. So essentially, um, let me let me see. Let me let me see. I'm going to go to the dump and n uh, to the dump and n, and I want to factor this entire stuff out into a separate function. If you know what I mean, uh, right? So we, it would be kind of nice to have like n n render, right? So and here we're gonna accept Olivet's uh, canvas, right, which is going to be an image, right, so this is the image, and then and, and the neural network, right, so this is the neural network. Uh, so here we accept this kind of sort of like parameters, um, which would be kind of nice to have as parameters in here, but I'm going to actually hard code them for now, because I'm not sure if they're really that needed, All right, I'm not sure if they're really that needed. Uh, right, so here it probably also makes sense, so we have a background, uh, all of that stuff could be uh, very much this stuff. Um, okay, so here we created the neural network, so the artificial neural network. Uh, here we created an image, and then we're gonna do, and then render, and then render image, uh, and then, and that should actually work like this, right, so that should effectively work. Uh, <clears throat> so now, um, let me try to rebuild this entire thing. All right, let me try to rebuild this entire thing. So this is Arch. Okay. So, and when we only have the neural network, the neural network doesn't store its uh, architecture, right? It literally doesn't store its architecture uh, because it basically consumes that architecture and transforms it into the sequence of matrices, right? So if we take a look at this entire thing, right? So we only have the matrices in here, but the stuff is kind of stored in these activations layers, right? So if we take a look at how we allocate the neural network, Right, if we take a look at how we allocate the neural network and then alloc, right, uh huh. So we're iterating, uh, like so, we're like allocating this entire thing, and then for the rest of that, yeah. So essentially, what we can do instead of arch count and some other stuff, right, so we can say. Uh, that arch count, or oh, maybe let's let's actually not use this entire thing, and n count plus one, right? So that's basically what we have. But arch count is already used throughout this entire thing. Then okay, so let's actually factor that out. Then arch count size t arch count. Uh, oh my god, I can't spell this thing. Doesn't really need any parentheses. Mm -hmm. So this is arch L, and interestingly, so we can quite easily say, okay, and N uh, AS columns. So this is how we can basically substitute this entire stuff. But we'll have to repeat that several times, which is, which is I guess fine. And then AS L columns. Right, so that's what we're iterating. Um, well, effectively, we're actually iterating the rows and columns of the current matrix. Oh, this is... this actually makes sense. Right. Yeah, we can just say... I uh, probably don't want to do that, actually. So I'm, I'm going to go for the safest thing, because it's super easy to make a mistake in here. Uh, right, so I'm going to just do something like this. Uh, calls, right, so this is the calls, uh, and then as uh, uh, calls, uh, emacs, come on, mm -hmm. I hope I didn't make a mistake, 
Okay, that worked. That worked beautifully. Okay, so that's pretty poggers. So what I want to do now is I actually want to move that code to, for instance, Zor. Right, so I want to move it to Zor. Uh, and how can we do that? Zor.c. Uh huh. So I'm going to copy paste the majority of this stuff. Uh, I don't want to make it part of an end.h right away because it kind of depends on the olive olivets. Right, so I have one header only library. I don't want, don't want it to depend on another header only library, right? I want it to be self contained. So I need to come up with a way to make this entire stuff sort of independent from the renderer at all. And I was actually thinking to um, implement it in a sort of a vector graphics way. So essentially, and then render as a part of NNH is supposed to give you an array of entities. And the entities, they have several kinds of entities, right? So this is going to be <clears throat> shape, right? And you can have like a shape uh, circle, right? So shape, shape circle, uh, shape circle, uh, line, and so on and so forth, right? So something like this. Uh, maybe we can call it shape kind. Right, and then you can have type def struct uh, shape, and it has a certain uh, kind, right? So kind, and then it's more of like a union in here. So we have different parameters in here, and essentially, and then render uh, gives you the array of those things, like a dynamic array of those things, and then you can render these things with whatever render you want, right? So maybe in a browser or something like that. Um, right, so because like a, this kind of style of rendering is, I think it would be a little bit better. Right? But uh, I want the visualization algorithm to be part of the library, right? Because I think it's going to be kind of valuable for debugging purposes and stuff like that. So I think it, it makes sense. Uh, right, but for now it is like that. Uh, for now it is like that. Uh, okay, so but to be fair, like Olivet's by itself is supposed to be very much cross-platform, but it's just like um. It's not a vector thing, it's more of a raster thing. So, yeah, it, it can only render things with a, a certain precision, so to speak. <clears throat> uh, resolution, that's that's the word I'm looking for. I'm uh, looking for a word resolution. Uh, all right, so we have a Zor, right? So we have a Zor, and uh, what I'm thinking is that, okay, so we have five uh, 5,000, right? If I divide it by my hand, it's gonna have 50. So I'm gonna do 1,000 of iterations, and on each uh, hundreds of iteration, right? I'm gonna print the cost, and I'm also gonna render this entire thing and save it, if that makes any sense, right? So we can try to do render, uh, right? So EMG, <clears throat> and then, and uh, then we need to save this entire st stuff somewhere here, right? Mm, so we can, we can do it like that. Okay. Uh, we can save it in here. <clears throat> so the question is, how are we going to be doing all of that? So I need some sort of a buffer, I suppose. So let's make it uh, a fixed buffer, 256. So this is what we're going to have. Uh, and depending on the current iteration, let's actually do um, a send printf. Right, so this is going to be image file path size of image file path and this is let's put that into a separate folder so this is going to be out uh, let's also create it right away right so something like this uh, and then zor uh, so zu and how many so i think i'm gonna, gonna be zero two right and we're gonna put the current epoch in here like so right so this is the image stuff and we're gonna be saving it uh, like this right we're gonna be saving it like this looks good I think it looks kind of good. So, all right, and uh, let me try to rebuild this entire stuff. Well, I mean, I have to modify the build. Uh, right, so I'm gonna put like this. Okay, so it doesn't compile uh, because uh, a known type you inserted to. So uh, I suppose we need to include std int. For now, we will probably need to include olivets, right? So for rendering and stuff. Uh, so let me start copy pasting some stuff from here. We actually will need both STB image right and Olivet, that's for sure. Uh, right, we'll need both. Right, so this is image, and we also need to uh, construct the image. Right, so let's go ahead and construct that specific image in here. Though we can be, we can construct it right away in here, 
uh, when we're saving this entire thing. All right, so like literally in here. Well, I mean, no, we, we need to do that when we are uh, rendering. All right, so we can do it in here. Right, because uh, the construction of the canvas is actually super lightweight, right? It is, in fact, super lightweight uh, on the canvas uh, because it's just like a simple structure in here because it's a view on the pixels, right? It's a view on the pixels. Um, okay, so that seems to be working like it's compiling, but because it's uh, all three, it's a little bit slower, but that's fine because we'll need speed in here. Okay, cool. So let me try to run the Zor and see if it's actually doing things. Right, so it worked fine, right, it worked fine. It actually constructed this entire thing and it should have generated a bunch of things in here. So this one is weird, why is that zero, zero? So I, I can rename it to zero, zero, zero. Uh, what, okay, so this is not how I expected this thing to work. Uh, all right, this is definitely not. Um, Excuse me, Zor.c. Am I am I an idiot? Right, so because okay, pad it with zero and width two. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, because it's we are talking about one hundred. Okay, it's it's about one hundred. Okay, let's try to do that one more time. Uh, all right, so that's fine. Let's do that one. Mm -hmm. I already ran out of tea. God damn it. So, yeah, any interesting idea on the stream takes way more than two hours, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Okay, so this was the original stuff, and then it, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything particularly interesting. <laughs> right, if we do just do fair, uh, right, on all of these things. Uh, right, oh, okay. Um, where is my fech and thingy? The black. Um, all of these things. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so this is the 10 sort of iterations. It's actually 1000 iterations, but each picture is 100 iterations. So uh, this is the second one. It quickly jumped below zero and then uh, started to yeah to 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 be like that but this is only specifically biases the uh the weights themselves didn't really change which is rather interesting isn't it right so but throughout the the uh, you know the learning process it's actually started to do this kind of stuff which is kind of cool uh, though initially the weights were kind of blank but they actually became stronger over time yeah Kind of interesting so yeah we can kind of see that so it will be interesting to look at the bigger even bigger neural network if you know what i mean right so we can take a look at the uh at the adder right so we can take a look at the adder so we can do subscribers uh off Good. so i think that's totally fine uh so uh yeah because the adder is a bigger and we can take a look at how it is going to perform right so yes 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 so uh so this is a back prop uh let me go to zor and just copy paste some stuff from here um, mm -hmm. so we probably just need this stuff uh -huh. So this is going to be this. Uh, so this is four bits. It should generate like a reasonably big uh, neural network, I think. Uh, so Zor. So where is the main? Where is the main? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And we can do a similar thing in here. If I uh, 100. Uh, so this one will generate 100 images. So let's actually make also 1000 because I don't know how much time it will take, but. Um, we'll see. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me see, let me see. So how did I start uh, to learn C? It was actually like, I don't know. I never actually learned C intentionally, if you know what I mean. Right, because it was just like over a long period of time. Sometimes like a 
uh, just did something very, very simple in C, and that didn't require the knowledge of the whole language. Uh, then, uh, after like a year, I needed to do something more, and I learned like another thing, and another thing. And in fact, this is how I learned majority of the things that I know. I don't uh, set myself to sit down, first learn the thing, and then do some, something with the thing. What I do is just like I'm doing uh, the thing I want to do, and I learn enough of the tool to do that specific thing, right? So, and then if I need to do something more, I just add to that knowledge. So it's, it's more, more of an incremental. And it happened like uh, very unstructurally over a long period of time. So that's basically the, the way I learn. So, and the, this, I, I can answer the same uh, thing about pretty much anything. How did I learn C? I learned it like that. How did I learn web? I, I learned it like that. So. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, I just like want to do a thing and I just do that. And along the way, I learn how to do that. Right? It really, it, it works really well in software development at least. Uh, right. uh, but because of that, by the way, uh, it's kind of difficult to do very ambitious things right away. So there is a limitations to that. Uh, you cannot just like go ahead and write an operating system without knowledge of C at all. Right. So you need to basically start with simple projects, right? Some, something very, very simple, uh, right? That you can learn how to do and then make a more complex project and more complex project and more complex project. And as the complexity of the project goes up, so does your knowledge, right? So, but you cannot jump from zero to like operating system, right? So you have to, you know, few things in between. So that's, that's basic. Uh, how do that? So error. Um, how do you decide on project ideas? Uh, I just like gather some inspirations online uh, by reading some different websites and stuff like that. Mm, you're welcome, thank you. Uh, all right. So let's uh, continue. So this is the adder. Uh, and I will just build this entire thing. Okay, how do you make sure your project is interesting while also not too ambitious? Uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's it's like porn. I know it when I see it. It's kind of difficult to, to answer. It's just like you need to try. <laughs> so <laughs> This is something that you will just see. Right, yes, yourself. Right, so something interesting. Obviously, you know that's something interesting because it just like activates the neurons in your brain. Right, so we all know what is interesting. It's just like looking at, at something, and you, you you can feel the activations of the neurons. You know it's interesting. If it's too ambitious, well, that means you try to do that and you run into the wall. So you reduce your ambitious a little bit and, until you can actually do that. So I guess I guess that's that's how you do that. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's try to, to build this into, I think. Uh, image pixels. So uh, we need to do image pixels. Uh -huh. Let's go. Image width and image height. So let's put them in here. Uh -huh. And then render implicit declaration. So I also need to copy paste the and then render. And then render. E. Uh, all right. Cool. Mm -mm -mm. So I don't know why it takes so much time. <laughs> I think my laptop is literally dying already. Uh, all right. So we're going somewhere. So does the cost goes down? I think cost kind of goes down to some extent. Uh, but I feel like it's, there's something kind of sus. Oh yeah, I see. It is in fact very much sus. So let me remove the entire out folder. Uh -huh. And I'm going to do out 
boom. Um, well, I will need to recompile. Let's go. Holy C is interpreted. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, so, how it evolved over time? That's the real question. Mm, yeah, you, you're not supposed to put this thing. That's pretty cool. Yo, this is so fucking cool. So, this is the initial neural network. And this is, it learns to add two bits together. And I feel like it kind of stores some sort of a table in here. Yo, what the fuck? This is so awesome. Okay, let me increase, can we increase the resolution first of all? Um, Alright, uh, we can do something like, okay, um, 16 by 9, and we're gonna have some sort of a factor uh, let's call it image factor, uh, like so. Uh, image factor. So it's kind of cool to actually see the neural network learn shit. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, right, so this is going to be 8. Right, I think 8 is going to work well, reasonably, maybe. Um, uh, what, the, what the hell am I looking at? Okay. And I want to increase actually the amount of iterations, right, so let's actually do five thousands, uh, right, instead of ten we're gonna have fifty of them, so it's, it's gonna take some time uh, while it's learning things. Uh, so the next step would be to actually, instead of saving this entire stuff, like, do that on the, in the window, like update the window itself. Uh, um, did it do the trick? Uh, I think... Yeah, I think it did the trick. So if I go here, now we have 50 of them. But that actually means, all right, so let me do RM PNG. Right, so this is PNG. And uh, essentially what we're going to do, uh, this one has to be uh, four, but maybe I'm going to do even five just in case. Right, so uh, just in case. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can one combine the pictures to a GIFs? Yeah, probably. Uh, why not? But what I want to do... It, it didn't even properly learn. Like, I mean, it still fails to do these separations. So this neural network is supposed to add numbers together, right? So we're teaching how to add 4-bit numbers, right? So. Uh, and uh, we didn't run sufficient amount of things, so it still doesn't know how to add these numbers, right? So, for instance, uh, okay, I rerun it, so we have to wait. So, three head and end. I think I just like didn't run the training process long enough, so ten thousand, uh, you know, epochs is not enough for this specific thing. Mm. Well, in this specific, what the hell is going on? Uh, I guess it's fine. All right, so is it is it okay? Okay, seems to be okay. Let's do fech. Where is fech? It's a goddamn small thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, image factor. Um, so it's 100 and we probably need to do like 80. Uh, to save picture with dynamic step size because the progress is much bigger in the first 100 years. Yeah, it's true. So it usually, the thing I noticed about the neural networks, right, is that um, the cost drops down very quickly at the beginning of the training, like very quickly. It's just like find it and then it starts to stall uh, a little bit. This time it's actually learned perfectly. So it actually learned how to add the four bit numbers, which is kind of cool. Right? Uh, okay, so yeah all right so let's see how it oh my god how it learned
and it kind of like yeah stopped so this is 50 so this is the first uh the first uh, state this is the last one and this is how it was transitioning towards it modifying weights and biases of this entire thing i'm not sure how visible it is uh right but yeah so the the weights also modify the like the colors and stuff like that so cool holy shit um so nice Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, we can make this uh, neural network even more sort of uh, deeper, right? One of the things I tried to do with this neural network is to actually have... Uh, okay, so this is two bits. I have four of these things and maybe another two in here, right? Maybe another two in here. Uh, this will make it a bit slower, I presume, right? Uh, but let's give it a try. Mm -mm -mm. Well, yeah. It's a bit cool, but I think 5,000 is doable. Alright, it's, it's almost there. It's almost there. It's probably, it's probably not gonna learn. I, I just edit the layers and it performed worse. Right, so as you can see, it performed worse. <laughs> which is kind of, which is something that actually happens quite often with, this, with these things. Uh, right, so, and I'm surprised why. Uh, huh, wait a second. So, at the 10th iteration, sort of like saving, yeah, it here, somewhere here, it made a huge jump. Yeah, it made a huge jump and started to consume some information in here. Right. Yeah, what I, another interesting thing I noticed uh, with these neural networks is that sometimes they are not, like, smooth. They can actually, like, stall somewhere for some time and then make a huge jump and then stall somewhere at some time and so another huge jump and so on and so forth. So they're going, like, downstairs. Like, there's sort of, like, a stairs when they try to find the minimum of that cost function, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So one of the things we can do is to actually uh, use SDL and with SDL we can just put this entire thing into the SDL texture and uh, just update this entire stuff real time. Uh, right, just update it real time. But I think I'm gonna do all of that already off screen uh, because I'm already streaming for two hours. I don't like to stream more than two hours. Uh, right, but essentially what I, uh, I already did everything I wanted to do today. I just developed the algorithm that just renders this entire stuff. Uh, right, and we can clearly see how this entire stuff works. Right, that's pretty cool. Right, so let me take a look. So, uh, if whether anybody actually subscribed. Uh, all right. So, thank you so much. Uh, I'm a robot. Uh, Steve says to uh, Steve says to trap. Thank you so much. Canap uh, Canap um, Clausy. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alright, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you on the next uh, stream. Uh, on the next stream. Love you. Mm -hmm.